Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley and this is Ashley and her books. I am new to the booktube world. This is my very first um, YouTube video. Um, some of you may know me. I do have a bookstagram account under the same handle Ashley and her books. Um, I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. Um, I kind of just started getting on Instagram, heard about this whole booktube world and started checking out some accounts and just really got into it. Thought it was super fun and I'm like well, why don't I start one, you know, like a super fun way to meet some people and be able to talk about books and everything. And basically the same thing happened with this YouTube channel. Um, I already used this account to watch people's other, um, other people's booktube accounts and um, comment and, and follow and everything like that. So I got the idea that why not in the same situation, why can't I do it too? So we're going to try, we'll see how creative I can get with video editing and lighting and all that fun stuff. Um, a little bit different than taking um, a single picture and I can take that picture like 400 times if I needed to, which I usually don't. But anyway, there's that. So anyway, being my first, um, my first video, I am going to start off with a little like intro about me. It'll be super short not really much to say about myself. And then I'm going to jump right into um, a November 2020 a wrap up. So jumping into it, my name is Ashley again. I am married to my best friend, Nathan. We will be married for four years um, next month. So super awesome. We've been together for six then. And uh, he's my best friend. I love hanging out with him. We both love reading. We like playing video games, him more so than me on that one. Um, we love cooking, um, basically anything that I do. I love doing it with him and he loves it too. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Um, we don't have any kids as of yet, but we do have two dogs. Um, they're my babies. <laughs> so we have a Husky um, lab mix and his name is Genesis. And um, I'm not exactly sure. We're not exactly sure. Um, he's some kind of pit bull mix, um, but his name is a Ronin. Um, they're both very big dogs and they very much run this house. <laughs> um, I do also have a beta fish, um, but other than that, um, that's all that's going on in our house. So it's usually pretty quiet except for some dogs, you know, wrestling and everything. Um, I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, Missouri, I just want to clarify that. I'm not to Kansas. It is Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> um, I actually live um, north of the actual city, but it's in the surrounding area. Um, so we live in a small town where we actually grew up. Um, so anyway, um, other than reading and watching booktube and surfing bookstagram in my free time, I like to cook. Um, I also like cleaning, which is kind of weird, um, but I just like having a clean house and the act of cleaning, um, for me is just very relaxing. So very often I will just pop in some headphones and listen to an audiobook or a podcast, music, whatever, and just clean. And that is that's fun for me. So I guess it's, it's a little bit weird, but you know, what can you do? Um, so other than that, we don't really do, I, I don't really do a lot. Um, I do watch, um, movies and TV shows, but that's usually with my husband. I don't usually watch any TV on my own. Um, he even started watching Gilmore Girls with me. So, um, anyway, um, that's really, I mean, it about me. Um, so yeah, we'll just jump right into the November, um, a wrap up. So, um, tomorrow is the last day of the month, which is just crazy. So that means we have one more month of 2020. Um, hopefully 2021 will be a little bit better. Um, sorry, I'm like super distracted. My fish is behind the camera and he never comes out of his little, like he hides in this little rock all the time and he's actually swimming around. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, my book club. So I am part of the Weeby Booking Facebook book club. Um, I joined them probably right around the same time that I started my bookstagram. Um, I super love it. Basically, I just wanted to find a group of people who enjoyed reading books as much as I do. Um, I don't really have a lot of friends um, that read or anything like that. And so, um, also I'm not very good at meeting new people. So meeting people on Instagram, book to, you know, YouTube, um, Facebook, all that stuff is much easier for me than meeting people in person. So I joined this book club and they are amazing. And they always have these super fun, um, like events and challenges and stuff that we do each month. So for the month of November, we did a tic-tac-toe slash bingo. So I did a tic-tac-toe board. Um, so basically we select, um, prompts and make a tic-tac-toe board. And then throughout the month, you read books to check off those, um, prompts. <laughs> so anyway, um, I read nine books for that. 
Um, and then I've read two other books since I finished um, my tic-tac-toe board. Um, so the first book that I read this month was Little Secrets, which I know I'm like super behind. This was also a NetGalley um, e-copy of this book that I had gotten before it was published and I had just never gotten around to it. So I purposely like made this, you know, picked a prompt and put this on my TBR for November. Um, so that I could get this book read and I don't know why I waited so long. It was so good. I rated it five stars. I thought it was amazing. Super, super interesting. And um, yeah, so anyway, the other um, next book that I read was called The Family Next Door, which is a nonfiction book by John Glatt, I think is how you say his last name. And basically this is about um, 12 children who were essentially held prisoner and abused and neglected by their parents and about how they escape and a little bit about what happens to them after and the trial with their parents and everything. Um, I didn't really super enjoy this one. I rated it three stars, I believe. Um, I'm kind of just now getting into the true crime books. I enjoy true crime podcasts and like documentaries and stuff like that. So I thought I would try some of the true crime and novels out. Um, I just didn't really enjoy this one. Uh, I don't really know why I guess it just kind of drug on I I don't know maybe true crime is not really my thing who knows <laughs> so another one that I read which I'm sure everyone has heard about is The Night Swim which I don't have this physical copy because I sent it to my sister to read um, because it was freaking amazing um, I rated it five stars um, I just thought it was first of all a very good book in the fact that it has that mystery thriller part it's got that really unique like true crime podcaster like you know um scene to it um like so there's some chapters that are her podcasts if you don't know about it but um anyway it's also a very serious book as it is obviously very similar to a rape trial that has happened before in the United States and probably many more um aside from that one but um it just takes a very very serious topic and brings it to light and I think that it's important for that to be brought to light because it is a very serious problem in our country right now. And anyway, I just thought it was really beautifully written and I highly recommend it if you have not picked that up yet. Um, okay, so I do have the physical copy of this one. This is Don't You Forget About Me. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you say her name. I think it's Mahari McFarlane. Um, anyway, I read this one for that tic-tac-toe um, also. Um, I was expecting this to be like a romance about her like meeting this guy and falling in love and all this and really the book ended up being more about her finding herself which I'm fine with. I just felt like I went into this book expecting something and getting something else. Um, the romance didn't actually happen until probably 80% through the book. So I ended up bringing this one three stars. I was just kind of disappointed in in this story. It just wasn't really my thing. Um, okay, so after that, I read The Testaments, which this is one hefty book, okay? Um, so I'm actually really super behind on the times for this one because I just read The Handmaid's Tale last month and I really enjoyed that book. I rated it four or five stars. Um, I actually enjoyed um, The Testaments more than The Handmaid's Tale, which a lot of people um, who enjoyed um, The Handmaid's Tale did not like The Testaments. Um, it is very different. Like, it's kind of surprising that these are even in the same series. They're very different writing styles, um, very different, like, stories and everything. And um, that could do, could have something to do with the massive uh, time difference between the two in, in the writing. Um, so maybe her writing style changed. But I really enjoyed it. It had those three different perspectives, um, points of view. And I really thought, I mean, you essentially know what happens um, in the book going in. Um, so this is really the buildup as to who these people are and what role they played in that outcome. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think I ended up rating this one four stars. Um, so another one that I read was an ebook called The Whisper Man by Alex North. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Um, this is one of the first I, I have recently gotten into thrillers and um, like mysteries within the last like year or so. And this is the first one that has ever like really like creeped me out. I was like, I cannot read this at night. Like I need to read this during the daytime. Super, super creepy. Um, it has to do with children and maybe that's a little bit what freaked me out. Also, one of the child, uh, the child in this has an imaginary friend and he talks to this imaginary friend a lot. And um, it's just really weird. I'm, I, that's one of like the weirdest things, creepiest things ever is like when kids start just like randomly talking to like things and like there's this scene in here and the little boy was like talking 
and the dad hears this like other voice it's not his son's voice and so when he goes in there he asks his son like who was that talking and the boy was like it was the boy in the floor and even just now I got chills just even thinking about that scene so freaking creepy anyway excellent book I rated it four stars um after that I read you are not alone this is another one that I sent to my sister so I don't have my physical copy um this is by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen I think is how you say the last name I've had this one for a while um I believe it was a book of the month choice which I haven't had my book of the month for a while now so obviously this is a little bit older um but I finally picked this one up and I really did enjoy this one as well it got um four star rating for me um this one was like really creepy um kind of everything well not I wouldn't say everything comes to light very uh, in the very beginning but you kind of just get these really creepy like what the heck is happening right out of the gate you're just trying to figure out what on earth the deal is <laughs> so anyway excellent book. I read um the tourist attraction so funny story about this one I signed up for a buddy read next month for a mistletoe and Mr. Wright not realizing that it was <laughs> the second in a series and then I also, for Net Galley, I got on Net Galley and requested Enjoy the View, which is the third in the trilogy. And so I actually um, didn't realize that I had done that with Net Galley and with the Buddy Reads. So I real quick like made some changes with my tic-tac-toe board and read um, the tourist attraction for a prompt with snow on a uh, book with snow on the cover. Um, I love this book. I rated it four stars. Um, I just thought it was so fun. Like basically it's like this girl is a tourist and um, she falls for this guy and he's just this like grumpy like bar owner and he just hates tourists but basically what else how else is he gonna make money in this tourist town besides like dealing with tourists so he's like super grumpy and like you know whatever I don't know I just kind of dug it and um, she is like super adorable she is like always like he talks about how she's always pushing her glasses up on her face and everything and like girl same it's totally relatable <laughs> so next one that I read was next year in Havana by Chanel Clayton um honestly this book was not not my thing not what I was expecting um this is a historical fiction slash romance I guess um basically it takes um place in two different timelines so one is in like the late 50s in Cuba and this woman's this girl she's a girl at this point her family um was very high up they're wealthy uh her dad's like a sugar baron or something like that and when the government is overthrown and the person who was running the government flees the country and another person takes over, um, for their safety, um, they, her family flees the country and goes to the United States. And there they start back up, um, start their lives, you know, the girls get married and have kids and everything. So then the other timeline is in 2017 when this daughter, this, this woman from the 60s, her granddaughter, um, goes to Cuba to spread her grandmother's ashes after she passes away. Um, so both storylines have romance in them, but they're very much in still love. Like, um, the one in the fifties was a little, uh, it was more okay for me because like it was an insta attraction is what I would say. Um, it wasn't so much like, oh my gosh, I love him so much. Like I want to jump his bones. It was more of a build up than that. <laughs> um, the one in 2017 with the granddaughter was like immediate insta love. I'm not against like instant chemistry, but like then she finds out that like the guy's married and literally <laughs> she is like hardly controlling herself to not jump his bones. And I'm like, I just don't really know how realistic that is. So also I don't really understand where all the romance comes from in that time period, in that timeline because like all they ever talk about is the politics of Cuba which I can see where you would get like his passion and everything like he's a very passionate about politics and his country um and his family etc and that's great I just don't really see where that connection is that they would get in order to fall in love um so those kind of, those things kind of just bothered me about it um it just seemed a little unrealistic story is a very predictable I pretty much called everything before it was happening um, okay, so after that, I went into a couple of ebooks from NetGalley um, that are supposed to publish tomorrow or something like that, like coming up. So I was trying to get those done last week um, and I got those done. So the first one was Thank You Next by Sophie Renald. And this is a super cute little like rom com, I would call it. Um, basically, she is heartbroken. She, she got dumped like a while ago and she still hasn't really like gotten back on the bandwagon after that. 
So this story is basically about how she decides to join Tinder and date through the zodiac signs. So basically she is going through them. So she's saying, okay, I'm only going to date a Leo right now. I'm only looking for a Leo. And then she'll go on a date with him, see how it goes. And then she moves on to the next one. Um, the, probably the best part about this book is the awful, awful dates that she goes on with these people. Um, they are hilarious. Um, it has some really good supporting characters. And then of course, in the end, she ends up with someone. Um, and he is just like super fun. Um, being kind of a nerd and I also married a nerd <laughs> um who kind of got me into uh Dungeons and Dragons I really love the Dungeons and Dragons like um aspect of this book like 100% I'm here for it love it um that one I think got four stars so anyway uh last book that I read so far in November um is called Write Before Christmas and that is write as in like writing um and this is by Julie Hamrell um this book I loved it. So first of all, one of the main characters, the woman, is a baker slash chef. I don't know what you want to call her. And I just love characters that are into food and everything. I, I don't know why, but I just love those kind of books. Um, she is a recently divorced mom of a college-aged child. So um, she stayed at home and raised her child. Her child is off in college. She's gotten divorced from the father and now has to find a way to financially support herself and her daughter without having her husband around. And she hasn't had a job since she had her child 19 years ago. Um, so she ends up taking a job, a temporary job for the holiday season um, to be a personal cook slash kind of a housekeeper for an author who is trying to meet a deadline. So enter the other main character. He is an author whose um, book series has become a very, very popular TV show. And he is basically on a deadline with his publishing company to write the next book and with this TV show um, to write the next season of the show. Um, so he's got a lot of expectations on his shoulders, um, a lot of stress. He's just kind of so he goes to this Midwest town um, basically to hunker down and try to write this. Um, the thing that I loved most about this book was the mature maturity level of the main characters so they are, are in their mid 40s so it's not the usual like you know mid 20s early 30s like super immature romance they have been through it all she's been married and divorced has a kid you know they know the financial responsibilities they have real life problems and there's just very minimal drama so i just really enjoyed that in this book it was it was great i um, rated that one four stars as well so, so far, that is all I read in November. I highly doubt that I'm going to read anything else because I picked up A Court of Thorns and Roses to read and that is the book that I started next just because I'm vibing with this book right now. Like I just read the back um, synopsis and I'm like, yes, I need to read this right now. So I don't think that I will finish it, but I did check out the audiobook. So I am hoping that tonight I will um, pop in my headphones and sit down and maybe I can get this done in the next couple days. We'll see. I don't know. So anyway, that is my November wrap up. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, this is a brand new channel, my first ever YouTube video. So I would love it if you could comment down in the um, comments. Let me know if you have any recommendations, any tips, tricks, anything that you would like to see on my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. I am hoping to post wrap up videos like this one, um, TBR, um, and then as I kind of get the hang of things, um, maybe I'll start doing some vlogs and, you know, kind of that other stuff that you do um, that you see in the other booktube accounts. Um, I'm also always looking for recommend recommendations of books and booktubers to follow, bookstagrammers. So anyway, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about the books that I read this month. I so much appreciate it. Bye, everyone.